Well, good morning, Gail. Good morning, all. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Scott Conley from Morrison Institute of Technology or Morrison Tech. Uh, I'm, I apologize a little bit. I'm pretty casual. I'm on vacation down here in Florida. Uh, but as long as it was a Zoom meeting, I thought I'd come in. Uh, I also want to start just by thanking you teachers for taking an interest um, in the different career pathways and industries. Uh, I think sometimes as we, you know, I've been in education my whole life, started in the public school system and then came over to the college uh, in 2003. Uh, but you get kind of isolated from some of these different career pathways and choices. Uh, I was teaching English for probably 10 years at this college before where I understood what engineering technology was. So I'm gonna give you kind of a nutshell version today. Uh, but I do talk to a lot of students and a lot of college students and the teachers are very influential whether we realize it or not in which direction the student takes. So the students that end up at our school uh, usually had a teacher uh, normally in CAB but maybe in industrial arts or something like that that saw that they had a skill and aptitude for that and kind of push them in that direction. Uh, and many of them find uh, great career opportunities in engineering without having the full four-year engineering degree. Uh, so I'm gonna start out today, and I thought we'd take a, a look at more of the uh, manufacturing route for the engineering. So uh, as far as engineering goes, there are really two pathways. There's the civil engineering, which is dealing more with the construction whether it's um, road construction, architectural, commercial, uh, and then there's more of the manufacturing or mechanical engineering. And then there are a lot of different specializations within those when we look at aerospace, electronic, et cetera. Um, so there are a lot of different opportunities for, for students who have an interest in engineering uh, and it may be overwhelming at times for them to make that choice. Uh, I know I had a cousin years back at UCLA who, um, he's an electronic engineer, but he spent a whole semester in electrical engineering program before he found out that he made a mistake and messed up. Uh, I feel these pathways are a good step forward to give students an understanding of what the choices are and where they fit. Uh, because I've seen a lot of students over the years and it's hard to make that choice. Uh, I still remember my sophomore year declaring an education major terrified me, uh, but it, it turned out to be the right choice for me. Uh, so within engineering, we always think of the engineer uh, by degree. So that's somebody who has the actual engineering degree, but there are many people who work in engineering who don't necessarily have that degree uh, or maybe have that title without that degree. So there are a lot of different ways that people can contribute. Uh, one thing I notice about students who um, who have an aptitude for engineering technology specifically, uh, they tend to be very visual people. Uh, and oftentimes they may not see uh, and visualize things the way traditional learners do. Uh, our sister school, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and that's a joke, but uh, they came out with a new study about how Asperger's students actually can be very gifted in engineering just because of the way they visualize and see the world. So they've been doing a lot of work there. And some of these students that uh, may struggle in a traditional textbook environment, you put them in a visual environment with a, a CAD platform and they tend to thrive. Um, but just a little bit about our program at our college. Uh, we offer a two-year associate's degree in engineering technology uh, or network administration, which is an IT degree. It's, it's not a computer science degree. It's basically everything else. Um, on the engineering technology side, they have two different specializations, the construction technology, which uh, prepares them for careers in civil engineering, and then the design drafting, which is more geared toward the manufacturing. Uh, but even in a manufacturing environment, uh, there are several different uh, types of engineering that take place. Um, and I haven't seen Sudhir yet from Wall Clipper, but he's an excellent uh, resource for you guys because Wall Clipper uh, has a lot of different elements to their engineering program. Uh, they do their own product design in-house. So the product design is how the engineer develops a concept for a product or a part or whatever you're trying to design. Um, and then you go through the process of how can we fabricate this? Does it work and behave as it's supposed to behave? And then how do we 
fabricate it in a way that it's cost effective. So there's a lot of different elements to get that product going from a concept to a viable product. Uh, then as we enter the realm of manufacturing engineering, there's a whole nother set of design problems and tasks, again, to make that as streamlined and as efficient um, and as effective in terms of quality assurance as we can. Uh, and then another element that Wall Clipper does is they do their own product testing in-house. So you have a product that is on the market, but you're constantly looking for ways to improve or adjust that product to make it either uh, more cost effective to produce or a better product in terms of performance. Um, now to prepare students for careers in, in this area uh, with our program, it's a two year associate's degree program, which is a little bit uncommon in the ET side. So engineering technology typically is a four year degree. Um, oftentimes it comes under a lot of different labels because the engineering departments can be a little bit possessive of the title of engineering. So for example, up at the University of Wisconsin Platteville, they call it industrial studies because they don't want department doesn't want to use engineering. Scott, do you want to repeat some of that? You're you're breaking up. I I think probably the weather in between us is <laughs> cutting you <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah. I think even the network wants to take a okay. engineering in the okay. title for their program. Uh, the way it works, weeded out by the, the high calculus and kind of fall back. <laughs> yeah, we go right now. So at any rate, uh, our program is uh, it's focused on engineering software. Uh, but in addition, which enables them to understand the engineer's world in the air uh, to kind of get things off the ground. Uh, but another essential part of what we do here is the general studies. Uh, so whatever program a student's going to get into, they have to have certain basic skills. Uh, we hit the communication skills, uh, the scientific reasoning uh, and measurement, uh, and then also the mathematics is a huge part of what we do. Uh, so they do have a good core of general studies. Uh, our students tend to be successful because they can communicate. Um, they can understand engineering language and technical information. And most importantly, uh, they're able to acquire new information and problem solve because as we've seen, uh, technology is always moving forward. Uh, one good example of that is we're exploring an engineering technology program that specializes in automation and intelligent controls. Many of the manufacturers locally and nationally are trying to expand and increase automation. Uh, and this could be an essential element to the workforce shortage that we're currently facing. Uh, our students in two years with no experience uh, average 49,000 a year their first year. Um, the top students generally start out a little bit higher than that. But again, the starting wage isn't everything. Uh, for some students, the better fit is the opportunities that a position might provide for them. Uh, within the first uh, five years of employment, our students average $56,000 $56, a year with just their associate's degree. Um, and we we get a lot of commendations in terms of return on investment with our program. Uh, we were on the Forbes list a few years ago. Uh, we're constantly leading the Zipia, which is a, a national ranker of return on investment for colleges. And Georgia Tech just came out with a, a return on investment study that went on a 10, 20 and 40 year cycle. Um, and we were the uh, top college in Illinois, except for the University of Illinois, Chicago, in terms of the return on investment based on tuition costs. So uh, we feel that we're on the right track and, and very excited about what we do over here in Morrison. Uh, that said, uh, the wages are not really the reason a student should choose our college. They should choose our college because they have a real interest and aptitude in engineering. Uh, Engineering is heavily science-based and our program is very science-based. You won't find very many 
uh, humanities courses in our program. However, uh, there is a very uh, creative aesthetic to design and engineering, especially with the CAD software and the 3D visualization and animations that you can do. Uh, additionally, the problem solving is really a key element to success in that area. Um, so it, again, with the pathways, I'm, I'm really reaffirmed by this idea that we're not gonna necessarily push people to a four-year program. We're not gonna necessarily push people to a skilled trade with no college education, uh, but give them the information to make an informed decision uh, as they leave high school. And I, I do feel that students will still probably wander around and, and do some soul searching to find their way. Uh, but I didn't have a whole lot of information uh, other than a few uh, self-contained aptitude tests that I took through high school. So giving people an experience to go out and see uh, what an engineer's life might be like on the job in terms of an internship, I think is a real key element. And again, not only in that pathway, but in all the pathways. Um, and maybe students will understand uh, where they fit within that pathway. Do I want to be uh, a designer, which is fine with an engineering technology degree? Do I want to be more the theoretical engineer who comes up with the concept and develops the products? Uh, do I want to be somebody who has that engineering, but also some management elements to my position, as we'll talk with uh, Sudhir here shortly, um, who you know, has management of other departments and other pieces of the, the operations wall clipper. Uh, so getting, and again, these students may progress along these paths gradually as they go, but I do feel the work that you guys are doing is very important to try and get people just kind of a head start. Um, college is pretty expensive to invest four years in something and be uncertain on whether that's really the direction that you want to go or not. So that's a little bit about what we do at Morrison Tech. And I believe Sudhir is here and he'll talk to you a little bit about Wall Clipper. And then if you guys have any questions, uh, hopefully between the two of us, we can answer them. Yep, I'm ready to go. Okay, guys, so, so I have a presentation. Can I just share it? Yes, you can. Okay, thanks, Gail. Yeah. One minute. Let me just figure it out. Um, so this is the first time I'm uh, joining uh, this meeting. Uh, so yeah. please yeah. bear with me as I figure this yeah. out. Yeah. If you, yeah, you found it. Okay. Yep. Okay. You're good to go and your presentation is up. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So again, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm, it's a pleasure to make this meeting and to see all of you. Hopefully I'll meet. I met Scott already. I'm hoping to meet the rest of you over my time here. Uh, so uh, as I was uh, working with Scott, uh, just, just a little bit, a bit background of how I ended up here and what, what I'm trying to uh, do here basically with my presentation is, uh, uh, I work at Wall Clipper. I've been, uh, I'm the director for global research and development and new product development. I've been here for about four years. And over the years, uh, one thing I have uh, uh, realized is that we employ a lot of, uh, Wall is one of the biggest, a pretty sizable manufacturer of uh, like uh, hair clippers, trimmers, and things like that. And we do uh, employ a lot of uh, nice people uh, uh, in the community. And uh, we do want to develop the community and grow the community too, as we develop. And uh, we do have quite a few alum, quite a lot of alumni from the local colleges, including MIT. Uh, so that's how I ended up talking to Scott Conley, just to kind of strengthen the relations. And he invited me, hey, we definitely want to learn about what Wall is doing, what positions you have, and how can that kind of tie with the community. So I felt that was a great idea. So that's how we, I ended up here. What I want to do today is just give you a brief uh, uh, background about Wall. Uh, I don't want to take a lot of time there. I'm assuming a lot of you who are from the area already know about Wall. If you want to know more, I'll be happy to uh, get into that. And But more uh, importantly, I, I just have 10 slides. I didn't realize how much time to spend, so I was planning on spending 10 minutes here. Uh, so just uh, idea of, uh, well, yeah, let me go into my presentation. Yeah. 
So who are we? Uh, just uh, peeling the onion to just uh, show what kind of technology magic we use uh, in, the, in creating our products that we hope will delight our end users who are barbers, home cutting folks, and people who groom uh, all those nice pets all of us have. And then I just wanted to kind of uh, go through some of the roles uh, that we have. Uh, ultimately, in order to make great products, we need great people committed people, people who have that artistic bent of mind. So I just wanted to kind of go through some of that. Uh, so before I showed this slide, I thought it would be a good idea to just show uh, a little a small video of the kind of work we do. Uh, one minute, sorry. Can you guys see the screen? Yes. Yes, okay. we can see it. Yeah. Yeah, let but, me. Yeah, I think yeah so those are the words. Sorry, again. Is, is there, if there's audio, it's on your end that you have to activate the audio. Okay, I don't know how to do that. I thought I knew it, but maybe I didn't do a good job. Can somebody help me uh, there? Um, let's see. I'm not quite. <laughs> Shave sound, uh, yeah. I think yeah. Let's yeah. see if that will work. Let's see. Can you guys hear? Okay. Yeah, so it just, uh, it's just showing that the different kinds of products we have and we have their use. So that's the hair clip one. Yeah. We call that as a humor. And that's the uh, uh, Let's stop that before it goes too far. Yeah, so just to kind of give you an idea. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Yeah, so those are the kind of products we are uh, making. Uh, so obviously, uh, it's, it's a consumer product. It, it has a lot of, now increasingly it is having a lot of electronics into it, but it's uh, a highly engineered product. Uh, created by your, one of your own, uh, the name of the guy who started this company and uh, invented that product, his name is Leo Wall, 1919. So it's a 102-year-old year, uh, company uh, started by Leo Wall and still in the family. So my boss, he's a fourth generation Wall family. Uh, it started in Sterling. Uh, maybe they changed the locations a couple of times, but they've been true to the uh, roots. So we have a pretty big manufacturing footprint here. Uh, we hire more than we have more than thousand people on staff here, uh, right here in uh, Sterling, Illinois. Uh, you can see, like we make products that go on uh, in, for grooming humans. We also make products that go in uh, cutting, uh, grooming our lovely friends, uh, all the pets. I also love the animals like cattle, horses, and so on. We have a lot of passionate users. Uh, I just want to give an example of uh, one of our, our friends who actually tattooed a, a product on his hand. And what we feel is it, it's at the end of the day, yeah, you're cutting your hair, but it's a very artistic tool. Uh, you can see some of the great artwork that people do. So we are bringing out the arts of uh, art, artists, not only of the people who use it, but we also need artists for the people who are creating this product. Uh, so this is uh, what technologies uh, go into making our product. Uh, so the business end of our product is this cutting blade, and there's a lot of technology that goes into it. So it starts with materials that can take the damage. Of course, it's only hair, you might say. But if you think like when you're cutting cattle, when you're cutting uh, uh, pets and so on, you have all this mud in it, you have a grime in it and so on. Even the human hair, it's amazing. It's, it's a pretty tough material, actually. So cutting it does take uh, some good materials. So we are looking always to improve that. So we are looking at harder materials, better processes, so on, so that they, we can really improve our blades. Uh, the blades are moved by an electromagnet, uh, electromagnetic motor. When we started this business, it was all a corded product. Now, as I'm sure all of you are aware of all, everything is becoming cordless. Uh, we need more uh, powerful, more small, more efficient motor. As soon as you get into electronics, you have these uh, circuit boards, sensors, the whole user interface and control, uh, a big part of uh, our technology. 
And again, batteries, if you don't know that already, batteries play a pretty big role. Uh, even electric cars are becoming uh, a, a big deal and that is pushing the technology on batteries. Faster charging, people want la longer than run time and the batteries themselves, we want last them as long as possible. And once you have batteries, you have, you have to deal with charging them. Faster charging, charging them without a wire, the whole wireless charging, uh, that, that, that's becoming a big deal. And then that whole housing, like it needs to be appealing to our users. It needs to last all the life. So advanced materials where you have a smart housing, tough housing, and so on. Those are all the technologies that go into making our product. Uh, so just wanted to kind of touch upon, uh, so obviously I deal in the research and development. So we are looking at new technologies. We are looking at how to use them in, in, in our products so that we can make better products that ultimately our barbers and home users and pet groomers like. Uh, so I already mentioned high hardness materials so that we can have better sharpness, uh, rust free, last longer, all these advanced materials so that you can have high strength, better functionality, low friction, flexible, all those nice things. Um, a new uh, ways of creating the edges of the blades and the blades themselves so that you can get more thin, more complex, more precision uh, that stay sharp and that, are, uh, that don't have a burr so that you get better performance. Uh, new processes so that you can process your blades in a more interesting and a more delightful manner. Uh, I, the whole battery technology, it, like older days, it was the lead acid. We had quickly gone to all these nickel based uh, things. Now it's all lithium. Um, and uh, there's uh, this whole talk of a super battery that will charge quickly, that will last for a long time and uh, that, that, that goes on for days. So we'll see where that comes in. Uh, again, charging systems, a lot of uh, innovations there. If you go to the Consumer Electronics Show, which uh, is a good culmination of a lot of technologies, you'll see these futuristic technologies where you don't even have to put anything any, close to anything. Just you'll have something that will charge everything. You'll have to see where, where that goes. Wireless charging, fast charging, those, that, that's where the future seems to be. And uh, Scott was talking about automation. Automation is, thanks to the, like the progress in a lot of uh, technologies, like that whole uh, miniaturization of stuff, the whole web, uh, like uh, high precision 3D printing, a lot of these technologies, uh, they're bringing uh, automation to the masses. In, in some sense, it used to be only like the semiconductor industry or the advanced manufacturing industries but uh, they're getting into all manufacturing industries. Uh, pick and place, uh, collaborative robots, and so on. So we are focused towards both the automation side and creating our products so that you can automate it, uh, the assembly part of it. Right? And in order to make all of this happen, uh, the, the, the people with the right skills are a very big part of it. So when you look at what goes into uh, creating a product that actually is successful, meaning that it meets our customer needs, it starts with observing what the customer wants, like how is he using our product? What are his pain points? Uh, how, what can we do better there? So we need people with very keen observation skills. Then you translate them into ideation. Hey, if you can do this, this is how we can help our uh, customers. This is how we can delight them. Then you need to prototype them to verify it. And once you successfully prototype and identify the, uh, the critical few features you want to improve on, you need to develop it. And once you develop them, you need to do it in such a way that you can actually manufacture it so that you can sell it at a price that the customer is willing to buy and uh, use it effectively. And it doesn't stop there. You need to be able to service it, the repair that comes in. So it, it, it goes the whole gamut of that. So I was trying to map out uh, what kind of roles, uh, engineering technology-based roles that are there. Uh, so a big deal, especially when we make products that our consumers use, like you and I use, uh, very keen observation skills are needed. So that's a, a skill set that is taught uh, with that kind of thing is uh, ethnographic research. You can come from any background. A lot of engineers are getting into that nowadays. And then uh, industrial design engineers become very important. They, are, they know like that, that's where they, they have a combination of observation skills, but they can translate them, that into a product that can be 
manufactured at scale. Uh, then uh, uh, the computer-aided design, computer-aided manufacturing, the whole rapid prototyping, 3D printing, tabletop CNCs, injection molding, a lot, lot of things go into the prototyping thing. And then you have the strong, uh, the, the, the core engineering dis disciplines, the mechanical engineering, the electrical electronics engineering, materials testing, and then the whole lab. Because as you develop these products, we need to continuously make sure that it's meeting all those different needs, end user needs, performance needs, uh, compliance needs, and so on. And then uh, as you develop and then translate it into manufacturing, onto the manufacturing floor, Automation engineers are becoming very important. Uh, industrial engineers who know how to lay out the plant, uh, the processes and so on. And then the quality specialists, quality engineers, and then the whole maintenance techs. When you have these machines making the product, uh, you need to maintain them. You need to understand how to maintain them. And then the whole tools that go on to making this product, there's a tool room technology. Uh, and then uh, again, in the service and repair, you again have maintenance and tool room uh, for too, as well as the service and uh, uh, repair techs there. So that's the gamut of uh, engineering functions, uh, technology development functions uh, that, uh, that uh, we are interested in. Uh, obviously, I think some of these people also get in, into marketing, into finance, into uh, project management, uh, uh, quality, uh, HR, it's, it's up to you. Like if, if you're an engineer, you can get into a lot of other things too. So this was the presentation I prepared. Uh, I don't know, Scott, if you wanted to add to it, a lot, lot of uh, people from your uh, uh, place have ended up in a lot of these roles here, actually, very successfully. So we have people who have grown right from like a tech all the way to senior leadership roles here. Uh, so the, the future is bright here, basically, for engineers. So what, uh, at each level, uh, you know, how could they get the training either uh, at Morrison Tech or uh, to fulfill the, the jobs that are there as far as the engineers? Yeah, so maybe Scott, you and I can take a go at it, but uh, so, so some of the things is, especially when you talk about Morrison Institute of Technology, they have trained their engineers very strongly in those, uh, the CAD skills, the rapid prototyping, and they do bring a lot of mechanical engineering expertise with them. So because of that, they have been able to do those, uh, like the ideation, prototyping, developing. They have played a very strong role there. And also in that manufacturing piece. So maybe Scott, yeah, you want to elaborate. Yeah. Well, I agree. I, I think it's, um, it's just a question of how you want your career path to look. I see a lot of graduates who go out with their two-year degree and kind of work their way from an entry-level design position up as they get more comfortable in their role and more experienced then they can take on more of those engineering type, more sophisticated engineering type activities. Um, another path might be to go and pursue a, a four-year degree in engineering. And we do have uh, a number of students who, as they complete the program, elect to do that. Uh, I think it really just depends upon the student's situation in terms of, are they able to go, go right um, on through their four-year degree? Do they have the means and the time to do that? Or do they need to go right to work? And it could be a, a financial uh, stipulation that causes that, but it, it could also be just students who are eager to get started uh, and get into the engineering world and, and out of the academic world for a bit. So there are a couple different paths that you can take. Um, it's just about finding uh, a good fit uh, for what your ultimate career goals are, because Walt Clipper does do a lot of promotion from within um, as people demonstrate their skills and abilities. Um, I think that's fairly common, but that's not universal. Some companies might be more rigid in terms of the qualifications for different positions. So, so again, it really depends on where the fit is, but it's a great opportunity for students from the local area uh, because there are uh, positions available for them and then they can develop. Um, I do feel that's something that we have to communicate to the young people in the area um, because it's a good reason to stay, uh, that you might have some opportunities in this area. Um, and as we see uh, with immigration and population decline, I think we need to do more things to encourage the, the young, talented professionals to stay in this area. Um, and opportunities with companies like Wall Clipper are things that do need to be showcased uh, because it's, again, how they fit 
and what skills and interests you have. Uh, some people might be much more excited about the larger design problems where other people are more uh, interested in the visualization and the prototyping with the CAD and those technologies. So uh, training is important, uh, but then also uh, the experience in, in choosing your aptitude or interest uh, is another important thing. And, and again, as a young professional going in there, uh, we need students to be aware that they may not um, know exactly where they're going to end up when they're fresh out of college. Uh, I am an academic administrator now, and I swore up and down that I would never be that, that I would just be a teacher. But as I, um, as I grew and, and aged within my career path, um, my goals, my professional goals and interests changed a little bit and shifted. So uh, this is a good indication of where do you want to start out and then where do you plan on going from there? So again, with our situation with Wall Clipper, they provide very good opportunities uh, for a two-year engineering technology degree where people can assume more of the true engineering activities as they grow in experience. But that's not necessarily always the case everywhere. It's also an indication that they don't have to have four years of, of, uh, of college in order to get training to go out and have a job in an area that they are interested in. That is true. So with just a few minutes left, did, did anyone have any questions about engineering, uh, uh, the skills and opportunities available in engineering? or about the operations at Wall Clipper as a local manufacturer. I'll just jump in with one uh, question about you know, the global scale of Wall Clipper. Brian Bartos from Morrison High School had a chance to tour the yeah, facility a few years ago as part of the Workplace Wednesdays program. And uh, Wall is kind of a global corporation. How does the Sterling um, facility, both in terms of design and manufacturing, factor into the global operations of a corporation since it has a really large footprint across the world. How, what is the interplay between Sterling and the other branches of a corporation? Yeah, so Brian, uh, you definitely I think you're familiar with the company. Uh, so as I mentioned, Wall started in Sterling almost 100 years back and the family is located here. So they're, they're, it's, it's uh, there's a, if you had seen our technology center, or the, the new office that is built here in 2017, that is our corporate headquarters. So Wall Sterling is the corporate headquarters, but we also have the manufacturing, the R&D and uh, the international division here. Uh, so when we talk about uh, two things, uh, the manufacturing put, footprint, this is actually one of the largest uh, manufacturing facilities within Wall. Uh, very, very surprising. In fact, I think we got an award uh, for the, from the Illinois uh, government for keeping a lot of jobs here uh, because that, we, we want to make high quality product and advanced product. So we want to keep the technology here uh, and we continue to really put all effort into that. So that, that is one key thing. And the second uh, key uh, feature is uh, the technology development we have three or four, four development locations totally globally, but this is where the, the major, like all the global leadership uh, is right out. Like I'm a global manager, so everybody else uh, is influenced by what our, uh, our strategy is. And since the family is here and they play a very active role in the day-to-day -day responsibility, uh, we are trying, we are keeping it vital, like the, keeping the vitality of the group here is very, very important to us. So we play a pretty central role actually in shaping the global strategy. And, and thank you for that question. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Brian. Thank you, Sudhir. I, you know, we are very um, lucky and grateful to have a, an operation like Wall Clipper uh, in our area. Yeah, and I do want to thank, uh, I think, the community. It's like, obviously, I think very highly committed people and the people we have here, like, they want to be here. They want to make this uh, uh, this uh, region grow. And I think, of, of course, I'm an immigrant. For those of you who can't make that out, I'm from India, but I've been 
in the US almost 20 years now, and I'm actually a citizen here. Uh, so yeah, that kind of a commitment, and uh, I think that, that technology, it's a high technology product, and the region has that kind of a capability. I think uh, we do need to accept that and uh, develop on that somewhat. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> do we have other questions from anyone uh, in the group? Does Wall Clipper take, uh, I'll ask the question, does Wall Clipper have students from uh, vocational center uh, come over to intern or to uh, check, it, check it out, careers yeah. out? Yeah, so obviously we are talking, I'm, 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 like I'm talking MIT, but we also have from the other like SBCC, the other groups too. So most of the colleges that are nearby like NIU, the four year degree and so on, so we have interns from there, UIUC, we started working with them much more closely. We have a student from there who are on our staff and so on. Yeah, so we do have a pretty strong internship program. Um, and look, since a lot of our employees are from the neighborhood, in fact, their kids end up as interns here. Either kids or their friends' kids end up as interns. Um, the class is actually, uh, the last year was the one year where we didn't have interns on site, not too many of them because of the COVID, but typically we do have quite a strong uh, intern uh, uh, population here. And Gail, I would close by, you know, Wall is obviously a premier manufacturer in our region, uh, but there are other manufacturers in the area too, right in the Sauk Valley. Um, and it is a good community. Uh, there are different varieties of opportunities. Uh, with a, a really small company, you might wear several different types of hats at the same time as in, in the engineering department, where with a larger company, you might be more specialized or be able to grow in a direction um, that, you, again, you have that interest and aptitude in. Uh, but when we're talking about engineering position, these, these are professional positions, uh, um, and they do have opportunities for you to uh, get your hands dirty if you, if you enjoy that and have, have an aptitude for that. Uh, or there are opportunities for people who are more in the theoretical side or in the management side. So um, as students show or express an inclination, aptitude, or interest, I think it's just important that we work together to help them get the clearest picture possible. And again, I, I appreciate all the teachers who took their time during the summer uh, to come on and learn more about the different opportunities, occupations, and pathways um, in our region that we can pass that information on to the students. Are there any questions? Well, thank you very much, Sudair and, and uh, Scott for uh, sharing all of this information. I think, you know, it, what we're trying, what I was trying to do with uh, having you guys was making that connection between the schools and the pathways and, and what was available to our students. So I really appreciate you taking uh, the time and, and uh, sharing all of the information that you did today. Yep. Hey, Gil, th thank you for the opportunity. Okay. Thank you. Thank and you. Scott, thanks you have, for inviting me to this. Yep. Thank you, Sudhir. Yep. You guys have a great day. Yes, thank Good you. Job. Yes, thank Bye. you. Bye. Goodbye. Okay.